recording the history of the, of the kings that rose up and the kings that were taken down. Israel in, has now s separated and it's Israel and Judah. Israel, the northern tribes. Judah, the southern tribes. Two separate nations, two separate kings. And in 2 Chronicles chapter 29, verse 3 through 5. 2 Chronicles chapter 3, chapter 29, 3 through 5. It says this. In the first year of his reign, in the first month, he opened the doors of the house of the Lord and repaired them. Then he brought in the priest and the Levites and gathered them in the east square and said to them, Hear me, Levites. Now sanctify yourselves, sanctify the house of the Lord God of your fathers, and carry out the rubbish from the holy place. Now it's interesting when you read those three verses, is that this is the story of Hezekiah. Hezekiah. What the Bible has interpreted a faithful king, a good king. He was brought up under his father, Ahaz. Now these are not common names like Paul and John today, or in, in Joshua that... Uh, nobody's really naming their kids Ahaz and Hezekiah, and they're a little foreign to us. But Ahaz is a, it was a king that was basically wicked, quote-unquote evil, meaning he did not do what his father David did. He wasn't a servant of the Lord. He was somebody who was, who was reigning over the tribes of Israel, but not as a good shepherd. He didn't have the heart of David. He didn't have a heart that pursued God. As a matter of fact, the Bible explicitly says that Ahaz pursued evil. He pursued that which not of God. He pursued false gods. Ahaz was not somebody who was looking for God to operate in his life. Now it's interesting that Hezekiah is brought up under this wicked king or this wicked father. Wicked meaning he did not serve the Lord. He sought that which wasn't of God. You know, it's easy to justify things in your mind. Ahaz looked upon the nations and saw some of the blessings of the other nations and says, I'm going to serve their gods instead of our God. He looked upon other nations. He looked upon Syria of the north. He looked upon the wealth of Damascus. And he said, I don't want to serve our God. I'm going to serve that God. They're getting more blessing than us. They're getting more. They've got a better system than us. So he left the things of God. He left the temple. He locked the doors. He forgot about it. He, the, the priest and the Levites who would serve the Lord day and night. The Levites were those who taught the word of the Lord. They served in the temple. They kept it clean. They kept it orderly. The priests were the ones who operated as the mediator between God and man. They left everything. And he trained the entire nation under wickedness or, listen now, unbelief. He raised the entire generation under the fatherhood, under the dominance of unbelief. He did not bring them into the temple, into the presence of God. Instead, Ahaz brought them into the false gods or as to what seemed right to man. Hezekiah is the son brought up in this. He's brought up under this. And as a young man, and he's just in his 20s, he becomes king. He's just a young man in his 20s, and all of a sudden he's looking upon things and realizing that what I've learned and what I've done and what my father has done is not correct. We've left the temple. We left that which isn't good. We left the presence of God. We're serving on every high hill, every God that's not God. He had to come to his own understanding of the truth. Many people are struggling with that today. They're coming and struggling in their minds as to what is the correct understanding of the truthfulness of Christ in their life. Even though I've been taught this way. Now think of it. Hezekiah's in his 20s. He becomes king of an entire nation. All the things that he's learned and been taught have been wrong. He's got to turn it around and realize and say, no, I'm going to be a man of truth. He gets the accolade, actually, of being a man of God. A man who had a heart like David. A man who did the right things. Some people in this room have, have been brought up under a godly parent. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God that people have been brought up under a godly parent who led them in the ways and the presence of God. But that's not so for everyone. True? Not everyone has been brought up under and trained under 
a godly parent who really loves, honors, and has walks in the holiness of God. And in that, there's certain traditions and certain mindsets, certain habits and character flaws and coping mechanisms and the ways of the world have entered into our lives and we're not sure how to approach things. We're not sure how to learn things. And is this right? And well, the more that you learn of the truth, the more that we're taught, the more that we have understanding, the more that we realize that there's a way that is not the way of God. Amen. As a matter of fact, many are the ways of man. But there's one way into the holy blessings of presence of God. One way. And in this, Hezekiah chooses that which is right. Each and every person in this room has to choose that which is right. I just wish that I could just make the choice for you and just say, well, you, 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 and you, you guys are all struggling. Uh, I've decided that you're going to. Wouldn't it be just be great to do it that way? To just walk around and just tell everybody, well, you're not serving. You've got this and we're going to just plug you in here, change that. But we're not, we can't do that. Each and every person needs to make that decision for themselves. All we can keep doing is offering the opportunity to enter into and walk in harmony with the presence of God. Is that not so? To walk in harmony with the presence of God. In harmony with His truth. In harmony with His love. In harmony with His holiness. In harmony with His eternal perspective and not our temporal one. God Almighty is calling us. And immediately He becomes king. And immediately what does He do at 25 years old? Verse 1. 25 years old. He makes this decision. Verse 2. He did what was right in the sight of the Lord. He did what was right. Where does he begin? At this young age. Many people at this age are, have no idea. Imagine he's running a nation at 25. At 25 years today, today, people are still trying to overcome. Gee, do I want to go to the party or don't I? <laughs> Is that right? Gee, i got to work 12, 40 hours this week. <laughs> yeah, I need prayer. i got to work 40 hours. And, and people are struggling with trying to make it. Do you have any idea what people are really dealing with outside in other nations? We have it so blessed. And yet in this, this blessing is causing us to become, to become slothful, complacent, and indifferent. Whereas it's, oh well, you know, when God comes, yeah, I've had, I've had an encounter with God. I think I'm going to heaven. Yeah, I'm pretty good. I think I'm better than most of those people. I'm doing okay. Yeah, I think I'm going to, yeah, I should slip in. And we're playing games with our own mind and justifying things. And Hezekiah, at a young man's age, made a decision. I'm going to do what's right in the eyes of the Lord. And what's the first thing he does? It says in verse 3, in the first year of his reign, 25 years old, in the first year, notice he doesn't wait to, gee, I, well, let me check out what the people want. How many people are conducting their homes based on, gee, I wonder what the children would want me to do. If you're leading your home based on what the children want you to do, you're going to have a hard time pleasing them all. I remember one time being in the car with a friend of ours. He'd love to take us out to eat. And the kids were all young and they would all sit in the back and he'd say, where do you want to eat, kids? Boy, wrong question. Try to get a consensus among just three of them. McDonald's, Burger King, and there was always the one who wants pizza. And it doesn't matter, they would, and then the arguments would start. And he's just trying to get us all to be in a consensus. Three kids! To be in a consensus and agreement that this is where we're all going to go and enjoy a meal together. There was no way. Till finally, Dad was placed in a position where I had to make the call. Somebody's not going to be pleased. But I knew that some decision had to be made or else nobody's going to enjoy anything. You can't operate with trying to please everybody and everything. Imagine if Hezekiah had taken, let's take a survey. Let's go through the nation and find out what all the people want. And then whoever's got the most, well, who I can please the most, will go that way. Or maybe there's a common denominator among them all. So a year passes and a two years passes and a three years passes and a four years. No, a corporate decision, a leadership position is made. This is what the Lord says. Not like what I feel is right. Not like, gee, this might, might get me the best result. He's not trying to play some pragmatic thought pattern as to if I take this step, they'll do this. I've taken the pros and the cons. This seems like the way. No, this is what the Lord would say and this is what I'm going to do. In the very first year, in the first month, 
at the immediacy of it. The immediacy. Immediately he says what? First year, first month, he opened the doors. They were locked by his father. Sometimes you have to undo what's been done. Oftentimes you have to undo what's been done. What you've been taught. What you've been trained under. Traditions and thought patterns and, and character things and habits. And, and it all kind of seems right. But the Bible says there's a way that seems right to a man. But its end leads to death. Immediately Hezekiah makes a decision. He makes a corporate command. And he says, in the first year, in the first month, he opens the doors of the house of the Lord. These are the entry and exit points. We all have certain entry and exit points. Matter of fact, your eye gate is an entry and exit point. How many things does your eye take in? If it did not have any power over you, why are commercials so valued? If it did not have any power over you, why are those billboards Always, always up and always being changed and always trying to make colorful and draw our eye in. Why is the image so important? Because the eye gate, always sucking in everything, doesn't let it imprint your mind. The ear gate, the touch gate, the sense of the mouth gate. Everyone has the smell gate. There's certain gates, there's entry points. In your spirit, there's entry points, exit points. Here, the temple of the presence of God, there's an entry point and is Christ Jesus. And a command has come forth and he said what? He said, open the doors of the house of the Lord. Open them. Take those locks off. Take those handcuffs off. Take those bondages off. Take that, break it off. Get it out of there. Open the doors. We've got to go in. Christ has opened those doors. Christ has opened the doors to the presence of God. Unlocked him. He's put out a command. The king of the Lord's army, the king of the army of the Lord's host, has opened the doors and said, enter. Come on in. Each and every person, Christ is commanding you. What does the Bible say in 1 Corinthians? That you are the temple of the Holy Ghost. What does it say? You are the, it says even, it says, do you not know that you are the temple of the Holy Ghost? In other words, if you don't know that, you need to know that. It's a question that needs no reply. Do you not know who you are? Do you not know who has set up his home, his habitat in you? Do you not know that you are the temple of the Holy Ghost? He's unlocked those doors. You are, have an entry and an exit point into the very presence of God. Young and old alike, rich or poor, male or female, doesn't matter. You have access to the very presence of God. Paul himself says that in Romans, that they go in and say, Abba, Father. You can come boldly into the presence of God. Not with fear and intrepidation and terror and I wonder, and you don't have to, boldly into the presence of God. You can come in. He opened the door. The thresholds need to be crossed. At every door, there's a threshold. Remember the sermon, Thresholds of Faith? There's thresholds that need to be crossed. When you come to the entry exit point of this church service, you had to cross that threshold. You could have walked back out, but when you walk into the thresh, past the threshold, when you go past the entry gate, you don't see necessarily what's on beyond, but you entered into. In this, you made a decision. You made a decision. At the temple, Hezekiah opens the doors and a decision was made. Can you imagine now, he didn't open the doors and just go, all right, I'm done here. All right, I'm in. And instead, all of a sudden he says what? Repair. Repair everything. You are the temple of the Holy Ghost. And the command of the king has come forth and wants to repair some of those things in your life. Those entry and exit points need to be repaired. He's looking to restore. He's looking to make it right. He's looking to have it work right in your life. How many people have you come across or how many things have you dealt with in your own life that just need a repair? And need to be restored. And he's given forth the command and saying, repair them. The very next thing, what does he do? He gathers together the Levites and the priest. The priest were those of the, of the descendants of Aaron. And they were the ones who represented God and they represented the people before God. 
the Levites were of the, of the children of the descendants of Levi, and they served in the temple, and they're the ones who taught the people the word of the Lord. What's the first thing he does? You need to know. We've got to clean things up. He brings in the, the people of God. He brings them in. He gathers them together, and immediately he puts them to work. And what does he do to them? What's it say? Hear me, Levites. Listen to what he does in verse 5. And he said to them, Hear me, Levites, saints of God. Stop right there. God Almighty has said that you are kings and priests. The priesthood of every believer. This was an illustration to realize that each and every one of us have been called the priesthood of the believer. Every believer is a representative of God Almighty in this world and the world before God. You are. The priesthood of every believer is what the Bible is taught with the coming of Christ. And in this, he gathers them together. And the first thing is this, hear me. It's not a, hey, kind of like, would you kind of like listen and, gee, I hope you buy into this and hope this kind of a cool philosophy or, gee, if I put this in some sort of charismatic way, maybe they'll all believe. He gives a command. The king is given a command, hear me. The very heartbeat of God, the merry mind of Christ has come forth and said, hear me. Listen. Pay attention to. Focus your attention on this. And he gives them a command. Number one is what? Sanctify yourselves. Saints of God, if you're going to start anywhere, start here. Sanctify yourselves. What does sanctify mean? Kind of a fancy biblical word which basically means set apart, set apart and get away from that which isn't holy. Get away from worldly practices, worldly thoughts, things that corrupt the mind, acid to the soul. Sanctify yourselves. This is not just here. This is throughout the Bible. The call keeps coming forth from the king. The call keeps coming forth from the commander. Sanctify yourselves. Who's to do it? Yourself. This is the call of the Lord. Sanctified. That means Gary Cody. And that means you. It's Gary, sanctify who you are. The Spirit of God has been given as the temple of the Holy Ghost. The call of the Lord is in Gary Cody. The presence of God. A new creation in Christ. And he's ordering, hear me, sanctify yourself. Pull away from that which is evil. Pull away from unbelief. Get away from corrupt habits. Get away from corrupt people. Get away from that which is acid to your soul. Sanctify yourselves and make yourself holy before God. Call upon the Lord's Spirit to teach us the ways of the Lord. Remember we just sang, teach me of the cross. What's the cross say? But crucify that which is of the flesh. In this, sanctify yourselves is the very first thing. Your personal being, your personal thought patterns, your heart. And many people struggle with this. Gee, that's because it's very personal. It's very personal. Deep within your own soul, in your own mind, you're struggling and you see others having fun and you, you see others getting ahead and you, and you see and you don't like the smirks and you don't like, like I've had a lot of people say hello to me and they find out what I do and it's, yeah. Nice to meet you. Like I want to talk to you again. You know? Right away, what's it tell me? Unbelief. Corruptible habits, corruptible character. They're walking in their own smirkness. Smug. You know? Like I know something you don't know. I know something you don't. Do you not know that the Holy Ghost is calling upon you to sanctify who you are and to live in harmony with the very blessings of God? Do you not know that this world is passing away? Do you not know that all the treasures that people are accumulating and amassing are of naught and are nothing into the eternal kingdom? Do you not know that the voice of death is calling for you? Do you not know that the destroyer is out there seeking to devour who you are? Do you not know that this world is temporal and that one day you'll walk into the very presence of God and either you'll say, Abba, Father, or he will say, I do not know you. This is the truthfulness of the matter. And the call has come forth, sanctify yourselves. 
This is what Gary's must do. This is what Kara must do. This is what I've trained my three kids all through their lives, calling for them. Now, I didn't every day saying, now, come on now, Sarah, Adam, Stephen, sanctify yourselves. What would that do? You want to irk somebody? Keep telling them that every day. Right? Come on now. Don't think like that. What did daddy say? Sanctify yourselves. That's not what happens. But there is the call to help a person to say, Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Not my will, but yours. Yes, Lord. I am willing to endure the isolation and the rejection of this world that I might have the rewards of the kingdom that is coming. I do not yet see them, but God has promised that they are there. And if he is blessing the wicked so abundantly, then how much more does he have waiting for you? So in this, we realize what's his next statement. He says, sanctify the house of the Lord God of your fathers. Twice he's called for us to set apart. Twice he's called for us to clean things up. And then lastly, he comes and says it very plainly. Carry out the rubbish. The need to clean the temple. Saints of God. Got to clean out the rubbish. How many times, husbands, have you heard, take out the trash? <laughs> take out the trash. The call of God, the King, the Lord of glory, has called for each and every person here. Take out the trash. And to do that means there's trash there. Take out the trash. I see so many people struggling in unbelief difficulty because they just plainly won't take out the trash. Put it where it belongs. I don't, we, we feel bad for kids who are being brought up in the garbage dumps. Regularly you see commercials and things coming forth saying look at what these kids are doing, living in garbage heaps, living in trash dumps. The prodigal son all of a sudden realizing I'm eating food of pigs. I'm eating trash. I'm eating trash. And yet today, that's exactly what many people are doing. They're eating trash. It's coming in off the TV. It's coming in off the magazines. It's coming in off your so-called peers that you want their attention so bad. Trash is just infiltrating and we're hungry for it. Magazines that are on TV, they say gossip magazines. To satisfy the hunger of everyone's gossip. And they have these arts and ten entertainment shows. And, and people are just, they want to know what's going on with, with Paris. And they want to know what's going on with Brittany. And, and, and oh, this, oh, I can't, oh, she had a baby. Oh, what are we doing? And this isn't just worldly people. I expect it from them. This is from people who come to church and say, I love you, Lord. They're feeding on trash. Trash in, trash out. I don't know why I can't overcome. God never answers my prayers, really. God doesn't hear me. Because you're feeding on trash. And the Bible says, take out the rubbish. Take out the rubbish. We don't operate with belief. We're operating with unbelief. We want just enough of God to make us happy to make us comfortable and so that we had a good day. Did you have a good day? Yeah, not bad. Did you take out the trash? No, not yet. It won't be long before it starts stenching up the place. In Hezekiah's realm, he opens the doors. He repairs the doors. He gathers the Levites. He gathers the priest. He says, sanctify yourselves, sanctify the house of the Lord and take out the trash. Now what all of a sudden, what's he going to tell all the people, all the nation? Well, job's done. Keep doing what you're doing. No. Time to come into the presence of the Lord. Now, can you imagine all of a sudden, the young family, this whole house has been neglected over 20 years. Doors were locked. Rubbish. Everything. Kids have been brought up going to all the high hills, worshiping gods with different names. Kamesh, Baal, all these other names that they're offering their, their, their offerings to. And all of a sudden, the, the command comes forth and says, no, we're going there. Isn't that kind of strange? We, well, wait a minute. Dad, we haven't done that. Well, where are we going? Well, why are we going there? 
All the, what do kids ask all the time? Why? Why are we going there? Well, we were used to over here. God has brought a change into my life. But I'm not familiar with this. We haven't done this. Now, come on. Can't we be going here? Now, Papa, we used to go over here. That's where all my friends are. No, the command has come forth. It's time to change and alter the habits. It's time to change and alter the habits of the heart. It's time to change and alter the habits of the home. It's time that we come into harmony with what the Lord has for us. To understand truth operating in our lives. And where does it begin? Sanctify yourself. Where does it begin? Sanctify the house of the Lord. I remember getting saved. I remember coming into my home. I remember the Lord touching my life. I remember all of a sudden looking at that little liquor cabinet that we had on the upper shelf where the kids can't get to. You probably have your own little stories. And I remember opening it. And the Lord said, throw it out. I paid good money for that. <laughs> See how the mind starts working? Now this is just, oh yeah, well I already threw my alcohol away. I'm all set. Really? What about all those other things that need to be thrown out? What about that gossip? See, we're just talking about, oh yeah, I already did that. Yeah, I took care of that. What about that complaining, the murmuring? What about all those things of the spirit that need to be trashed out? But for me, in my first spot was take out the liquor bottle. Gee, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to give it away. I can't just throw that away. You're going to give away that which I've told you to throw away? Down the drain it went. My first step. Then all of a sudden it was clean out the house of the Lord and it was books. Certain books and things like that that they weren't bad books, but they weren't good books. They're not bad books, but they're not good books. Throw them out. All of a sudden it was arranging finances. I worked two days just to organize my taxes and get them all right and to arrange my business plan and to make sure that next year was going to be all okay. And I sat down and I said, honey, it's done. I sat down, put my head to the pillow and said, oh, thank God, it's done. And the Lord says, it's all wrong. You did it according to your, what you wanted. You did it according to your will. You did it as to what you think is right. Now do it my way. One hour later, I was done. His way. And the Lord speaks, and moves, leads, and guides because what? Take out the trash. And then he starts working on pride and ego and he starts working on gossip and he starts working on murmuring. He starts working on timidity. He starts working on insecurity and inadequacy and oh I'm nobody and I'm nothing. What does the Bible say? That you are a victor. That you are the presence of God. That you're the temple of the Holy Ghost. You were but now you are. You were this but now you are this. And all of a sudden we realize that God is taking that which was useless and meaningless and making it into something. When you thought you were something, you were nothing. Now that you know that you're nothing, you become something. Amen. That's what God does in our life. He starts changing us. And he says, take out the rubbish from the holy place. It may be alcohol, it may be nicotine, it may be gossip, maybe may be all kinds of... God, there's tons of things you can give yourself to. Changing of just your TV habits. Changing of your work habits. Changing, maybe it's just stop complaining. And start blessing. Maybe it's stop thinking about life around you and start thinking about life around Him. God's changing our lives. And it starts with just simply, yes, Lord. Amen? Amen. Yes, Lord is where it begins. Don't let these things be an acid to your soul. What would our country be like today if everyone started just taking out the trash? The trash of our hearts, the trash in our homes. If we started saying no to the things that are acid to the family life and started saying yes, what would America, what would the whole face of it change like if we just started taking out the trash? Giving no credit, giving no attention, giving no voice to, to the vamps, to, 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 the, to the pimps, to, the, to the, uh, all the things that are out there? What if we just said no to all the drugs? What, if, what would the, all of a sudden our whole nation change like and look like if we just started saying no to things and saying yes to God? If everyone just said yes to the Lord, what would our country now look like? What would your home look like? What would your children look like? Children, youth, career people, adults, retired people, male, female. What, what would your life look like if all of a sudden you just took out the trash? Well, there's just so much of it. Start with a little. You know, 
the land that my wife and I are building on. When we started off, I couldn't walk three feet without a branch in my way, without a fallen tree, without a, I couldn't even see past 10 feet without something in my way. You had to walk precariously and you're over this and tripping over that and, and you got the saw in your hand and you're, you're watching that and, you, and, you, and you're trying to get to and we're trying to figure out what, but there's trees and trash everywhere and they just cut it down and left it, you couldn't even walk through. So where do I begin? Begin where you are. Find a spot, start cleaning. Concentric circles, start cleaning. Start clearing. But it's so much. The more that you clean, the more the Lord will show you. Because the closer you draw to Him, the closer you draw to Him, the more of you you'll see you really got. It's so easy to just hold back and say, I got just enough. Yeah, but you got too much of you. The closer we draw to him, he starts showing us who we are and we just keep cleaning, take out the trash. Take out the trash. Take out the rubbish. Sanctify yourselves in Jesus' name. That's what we're looking to do. That's what I do. That's what Gary does to Gary. Take out the trash. This is not anything I'm giving to you that I don't apply to myself that has been applied and that I do apply. If I ever stand here before you and say, this is what I did and I'm now all set. <laughs> You've got a problem. <laughs> I've got a problem. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> this is never where we want to be. It's a daily battle. That's why Jesus says, take up your cross every day and follow me. At the cross. At the cross. Where I first saw the light. And the burdens of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith. I received my sight. And now I am happy all the day. In Jesus name. You know. I don't feel led to have altar call. But I do feel led to command in the name of Jesus Christ, rubbish be gone in Jesus' name. Fix the doors. Open them. Fix them. Sanctify yourself. Sanctify the house of the Lord. Do you not know that you are the temple of the Holy Ghost? Take out the rubbish. Carry it out. If you need help, we got helpers. If you need help, we've got helpers. People who will pray. People who will speak into your life. People who will show you the truth. Never take the word of the Lord for granted. Never follow according to the peers. But follow according to the command of the Lord. Take out the trash. Clean the temple of the God. Clean it up. You'll see the power of the Lord move upon you. Father in heaven, we love you today. Well, Father, we belong to you. We're the sheep of your pasture. And you are the good, great, and mighty shepherd. I thank you for your love. Thank you for your grace. Lord, I know that we're not walking alone. It's time to cast aside the hindrances that so easily beset us. Weights and measures that are weighing us down. Father in heaven, let us run the race with joy in our heart. Encouraging one another to serve the Lord. Not taking anything for granted, but walking with the blessings of the Lord. Knowing, Lord, knowing that the rewards of the Great One are waiting for those who love Him. Let us not be deceived by this world. Let not the temptress draw us away with its seductrix look. Let not sensuality of the soul lead us astray. But let us look, Lord Jesus, to the kingdom. Let us look with eyes of faith that see the coming of the Lord. Let us be prayerful people, powerful in the presence of God, walking according to the promise that you will come again. Jesus, in your precious name, amen. 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 Love God. Love God. Love one another. And enjoy one another.